The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyonga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this session of e-counseling. I am Yenese Mirabekoni, a senior guidance counselor for Form 5. Today, we are going to be looking at the general presentation of the guidance and counseling syllabus for Form 5. We have the presentation, objectives of the syllabus, expected competencies, previous knowledge. Presentation of the syllabus. With the first lesson or the first topic of this program is appropriation of study techniques. The second is observing healthy lifestyle and attitudes. Next, use of different information and communication channels. The next one is the development of the personality of the learner. And lastly, we have elaboration of the school and professional projects. So if you see from five has five broad topics. These topics have subtopics and the subtopics equally have lessons. The first subtopic is aptitude. We have the second time management, the third techniques of assimilating subjects taught, preparing for examination and the factors of school success. Looking at appropriation of study techniques, which is topic two, we have subtopics such as life hygiene rules, the risks and perils linked to adolescent sexuality, risks and perils linked to the consumption of psychoactive substances. The characteristics of good information is the first sub lesson under topic theory. And topic theory is titled Use of Different Information and Communication Channels. Here we have three subtopics. The first is the characteristics of good information. Second, usage of ICT. Third, the risks of poor use of ICT. When we go to topic four, which is titled the development of the personality of the learner, we have two major subtopics, decision-making and self-assertiveness. And lastly, topic five is titled elaboration of school and professional projects. Here we have five main subtopics. The first is the different fields of studies and their opportunities. The second is the concept of a project, the search for employment, and the concept of self-employment. This is the program for Form 5. So today, we are going to equally look at the general objectives of this syllabus. And I want you to know that the objectives were coined with respect to the orientation laws of Cameroon. The first objective is self-mastery in order to study better. Second, mastery of study methods and techniques. Here we are going to look at different study methods such as the x theory arrow study methods and even the mind mapping study methods. The third objective is the identifying they can identify the consequences of poorly managed sexuality and the effects of the consumption of psychoactive substances. There is violence in our school. Students do consume psychoactive substances which affects their behavior and equally affects their performance. And next we are going to look at develop a project for your career. Students cannot succeed without 
developing or building a career project because building this career project will lead them into professional insertion. And the last but not the least objective is develop projects in order to cope with professional insertion difficulties and equally get acquainted to the realities of the job market. Now, what are the expected competencies after following this beautiful program for orientation? The first competence that students in Form 5 are expected to acquire is that they should be able to manage teaching and learning that is adapt in the school environment. Students are expected to be able to live in a healthy environment and observe hygiene rules. That is why we talk of clean school and green school concepts. Thirdly, students are going to understand the consequences of not using ICT tools properly. Fourthly, students are expected to make informed decisions and to be able to assert themselves freely. And the fifth expected competence is that students should be able to organize themselves better. When you organize yourself better, you are going to prepare for your exams appropriately. Now let us look at the general presentation of topic one. Topic one is titled Appropriation of Study Techniques. It has one subtopic which is aptitude and aptitude have two lessons, physical aptitude and intellectual aptitude. The second subtopic is time management. Time management has three lessons. First is managing school time, managing extracurricular time, and elaborating a study timetable. The next subtopic under topic one is the techniques of assimilating subjects taught. Remember, you don't use one technique to read science subjects and art subjects alike. So here you are going to look at the lessons, which is how do you study art subjects? How do you study science subjects? And how do you study trade subjects? Next subtopic is preparing for exams. Examination preparation is divided into three phases. We have long-term preparation, medium-term preparation, and short-term preparation. When we look at all this, we get to the next subtopic, which is the factors of school successes. These factors are divided equally into two lessons, endogenous factors, which are the psychological factors within the learners, and exogenous factors, which are mostly the sociological factors. The next subtopic is life hygiene rules. This is the first subtopic under topic two. The presentation of topic two goes as such. We have life hygiene rules, which has lessons such as body hygiene and environmental hygiene and risky sexual behavior. The second subtopic is the risks and perils linked to adolescent sexuality. The lessons here are the consequences of poorly managed sexuality. And the next topic goes as such, the risks and perils linked to the consumption of psychoactive substances. Here we have several lessons such as the presentation of some psychoactive substances, the consequences of consuming psychoactive substances on your academics, as well as on your social domain. The next lesson or topic is topic theory. Model theory is titled the use of different information and communication channels. Here we have subtopics such as the characteristics of good information. It has two different lessons, current and pertinent, reliability, accessibility, and originality. These are the characteristics of good information. The next subtopic is usage of ICT. How do we use our information and communication tools? We should understand that we have the good usage and the poor usage. And the next subtopic is the risks of poor use of ICT. What are the consequences of ICT tools not properly used on the personal domain and on the social domain? Topic four is titled the development of the personality of the learner. Here we have two major subtopics. The first one is decision making. Decision making have lessons such as definition of concepts and stages of decision making, which we are going to dwell on the ideal method. The next is 
other elements to take into consideration when making decisions. And we are equally going to look at the advantages of applying the procedure of decision making. This next subtopic under topic four is self-assertiveness. Students do fail not because they don't know, but maybe because they don't know how to assert themselves properly. So under this subtopic, we are going to be looking at the definition of concepts, that is what is self-assertiveness. We are equally going to be looking at assertive and non-assertive behaviors. We will look at some techniques of self-assertiveness and we are going to look at the different stages of self-assertiveness as well as the obstacles to self-assertiveness. Now we are going to get straight to topic five. Topic five is titled Elaboration of School and Professional Projects. This takes us to the world of work. This topic has two subtopics. The first is the different fields of studies and their related opportunities. This subtopic has several lessons. We will look at art series and the academic and professional opportunities. We will look at science series and their academic and professional opportunities. We are equally going to look at technical series and their academic and professional opportunities. No student is left out. Whether you are in the general sector or the technical sector, this lesson touches all Cameroonian students. And the next subtopic under topic five is the concept of a project. This project can be a school project as well as a professional project. Here we have lessons, definition of concepts, the different types of projects, the constitutive elements of a project, the exploration of the various sources of information on employment, and lastly, the techniques of employment search. <laughs> After the general presentation, we are going to get straight into the first lesson of today, which is titled Physical Aptitude. I want you to take a look at the image in front of you. You are going to see some component elements of physical aptitude. A student cannot study effectively without flexibility, without speed, without endurance, and without strength. So we are going to look at physical aptitude as well as the importance of physical aptitude to you as a student and how it contributes to your academic performance. Let us look at the plan of this lesson one. We look at the objectives. We look at the previous knowledge, life situation, learning activities, as well as some application exercises. What then is the objective of introducing physical aptitude to Form 5 students? Physical aptitude is aimed at enabling students to understand their basic physical abilities and skills, as well as the importance of physical aptitude to their education and their career in general. Last year, when we were in Form 4, we studied so many things. We looked at learning techniques. We saw so many different study methods and we equally learn attitudes to adapt in the face of negative and social influences. Today, we are going to be looking at physical aptitude and we will bring a life situation to situate the context of the lesson. Tyler is 15 years old. His dream is to become like Francis Ngannou, but Tala is obese. His friends nickname him Peppa Pig. Tala likes sports, but he cannot do sports. He is not active. He eats too much and he easily sleeps in class. He likes to be lonely because his friends always laugh at him, but Tala started feeling depressed. He is frustrated and he decided to go see his guidance counselor. We have listened to the story of Tala, and let us look at some learning activities. What can you say about Tala? Obviously, Tala is a student in Form 5 who is obese, he is not active, 
and he sleeps in class. And most importantly, his friends call him Peppa Pig. Let us look at the second question. Why do you think Tala is obese? The obvious reasons are overfeeding as well as lack of physical activities. Now, I want you to look at the image. Do you recognize that Cameroonian athlete? Of course, he is Francis Ngano. Do you think Tala can achieve his dream of becoming a boxer like Francis Ngano? Yes, Tala can do that. How? If he is determined to improve on his physical fitness as well as work on his lifestyle. Now, can you list five benefits of physical activities to students? I want you to know that physical activity helps students to improve their memory. Once your memory is improved, your concentration level increases, you will have focus. It equally reduces stress and anxiety. It builds self-confidence and it helps to strengthen relationship, whether personal or interpersonal. Let us get to the introduction of our lesson of today. Remember, we are looking at physical aptitude. What are physical abilities? They are the capacity to do tasks that, that demand stamina, that demands dexterity, and maybe strength. Physical ability have various factors. And you can bear with me that for you to do well with your education, you need the components of physical activities, such as you need to be dynamic, you need to have strength, you need trunk strength. When we talk of trunk, trunk is like the core of your body. Imagine a body without a head nor a leg, it will not go. So for you to be performant, you need to be physically apt. We need static strength. This is all about consistency and endurance. We need explosive strength. You need to, you need to, be, you need to be fit physically in order to cope academically. We equally need some sort of body coordination and balance. Students, learn, students need to learn how to balance between their intellectual and their physical ability for optimum performance. Aptitude. We have been making mention of the word aptitude. Aptitude simply is the natural ability to learn or to perform in a particular area. It is considered as that inner or inborn ability that you need in order to acquire skills and knowledge. We cannot talk about aptitude without talking about skills, without talking about competence or talents. Why? Because students always misinterpret these words. We are going to look at the words in order for us to better understand what is aptitude. Skills are specific learned abilities that you as a student, you will require in order to perform your work successfully. So skills simply means what can you do? Meanwhile, competence refers to a broader concept. Competence is a combination of skills, knowledge, and behavior. Competence goes to answer the question, how can you do it? Everybody can be skilled, but not every person is competent. And that is what, that is what most job employers need when they are looking for a staff or an employee. Now, talent is an inborn ability to do something exceptionally well. We know of people who are talented like the Etofis, the Nganus, the Fela, and all the like. Those are inborn aptitudes. What then is physical aptitude? Physical aptitude comes from a Greek word, aptitude, which means the ability to do it. Aptitude generally refers to your natural bodily ability. And when we bring physical to it, we are trying to incorporate that bodily part into it, that ability to do something with your corporal body, that is physical ability. 
Now, what are some of the examples of physical skills that students need in order to excel in their academics? We talked of endurance, stamina, that is power or strength, flexibility, speed, coordination, accuracy, and a balance. You need all this for you to succeed in your academics. Now we are going to look at the benefits of physical aptitude to you as a student. I know so many students will start asking of what importance is this lesson to me? This is what we are going to be seeing right now. The first thing is it helps in cognition. Physical aptitude ensures motor development and fitness. Physical aptitude reduces the risk of obesity and heart diseases. Physical aptitude improves your memory as well as your level of concentration. Remember the story of Tala. Tala was obese. He sleeps in class, which means concentration level was zero. He can't focus because he already starts experiencing some health issues. And that is why physical aptitude is very important for every student. Physical aptitude equally helps you to improve on your body functions or organs. It helps all the organs of the body to function appropriately. We all know of the, function, the organs of our body. We do have the respiratory organs, excretory organs, and digestive organs. Without physical aptitude, all these organs will not function appropriately. It can cause ill health and mental health issues and which will affect your academics. Physical aptitude equally prevents you from having cardiovascular diseases. Now, let us look at some great African icons with great physical dexterity. We have Super Makia and Francis Ngannou in the world of wrestling. We have Roger Miller and Samuel Etofields in the football world. We have Manu Dibango and Fela Kuti in the world of music. We have Sarah Etonde in the world of race. We are going to be looking at jobs that require physical aptitude. There are certain jobs that you can't do without physical aptitude. Look at trade jobs like plumb, plumbing, construction, all the engineering fields, you need physical aptitude. Performing arts, we made mention of Etofis and of Manu Dibango, you need physical dexterity. Your health and wellness professions like medical careers, tour guides, event planners, security guards, all these professions need a great deal of physical dexterity. Application exercises. What have you understood in today's lesson? Let us start by looking at what is aptitude. We said aptitude is that ability to learn something in a specific area. How can you assess your physical aptitude? Start by creating a list of things that you think you are, you are good at. You can ask from your friends, ask from people that knows you very well. Imagine a problem and see how you can solve it. What then is the difference between skills and competence? Remember we said skills are specific abilities that employers need. Why competence is a bit broader, it is made up of knowledge, ability and behaviors. The next question is, can you list six physical skills that you need in order to be a good athlete like Francis Ngannou? We have endurance, stamina, strength, power, and dexterity. In summary, in Latin, aptitude is the ability to carry out a task. Physical aptitude on its part is linked to our body or the corporal. Physical aptitude is related to healthy functioning of the organs. It is very necessary for all students to have physical aptitude in order to boost intellectual aptitude, which leads to maximum performance in your academics. We can't live without having our homework for today. Some from five students went and met their VP. 
They complain to the vice principal that they don't want physical education on their timetable because they are in an examination class. What advice can you give to these students? Okay, in our next lesson, we are going to be looking at intellectual aptitude. Remember to do your homework. See you next class. Una tege si matege yop, una tege minga matege nyum, una tege majang matege ndom, mane tambia niña ne injubia yen, gani bana matege mut, gani la kiri watege ndong, esa tina bia jinkido, mane tambia niña ne injubia yen, tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia niña ne injo bia yen.